Today we are working on a networking switch. This is a sort of networking switch, 8 port, you can see. Uh, TP Link, this is from TP Link China, of course. And this switch is not behaving properly. Before it was working properly, but now I'm going to show you uh, it's not working properly. And we will troubleshoot it and we'll repair it. So here is the repair. As you can see, here is the switch. And here is, here is of course the power. And uh, this power I'm going to connect to this switch. Here is the port, 9 volt. And you can see now, what it is doing is, you can see the power LED is coming. And the rest, and the rest of the 8 uh, uh, indicators, LEDs, they are blinking. They are not behaving properly. The proper way is, the LED should blink as we are connecting cables. As now there is no cable connected so there should be no LED like it is blinking at the moment all LEDs are blinking uh, all together this is not the proper way sometimes two are uh, staying sometimes all are blinking so this is not the proper behavior of this particular switch so we are going to troubleshoot it and we'll repair it for this purpose I'm going to uh, disconnect that power supply and open it of course here are the two screws you can see there were two screws I just removed them and now I'm going to remove this cover and put them sides so this will come something like this in this way so now you can see all LEDs are in front and I'm going to power it up once again as I did it so this one is the power LED and the rest are for the ports so this is doing the same way as it was so looking at the circuit as you can see here is the crystal here is the controller the networking controller here is the whatsoever this power supply circuit you can see this one and uh, what we are suspecting these are the switches actually they are controlling the ports so what we are suspecting, one can suspect in a very very much initial way that the controller went bad and it's not behaving properly. So either we have to replace the controller or uh, we have to throw it away because these switches are not very much expensive. So the best way is to replace them. But uh, we can fix it of course. We are not thinking that this controller is bad. Instead what we are going to do is we are going to check the power supply. So uh, while I will see, look at the power supply, you can see here is the IC and this IC is of course the number is, I just printed its data sheet, you can see, I'm just showing the data sheet, this is AZ34063, uh, this one is the IC and here is, as you can see they, they have just shown it as a block and here is the input and of course this is a typical application for um, step down inverter DC to DC converter 0 0.8 ampere of course so here is the input 25 volts this is somewhere from 9 volt or 5 volt to 25 volt and uh, here as we can see here is a 5 volt 500 milliampere is coming and of course this is the output here we can see this one inductor and uh, capacitor these are of course optional they are not there in our design and here another inductor which is 220 pH had been written something like this uh, Pico Henry L1 this is the important this is the important part of the integral part of the power supply without this this power supply will not work and here is the capacitor of course you can see C2 uh, 400 pF they have written 400 pF but this is not actually 400 pF instead this is a high voltage capacitor the high capacity capacitor this is 470 microfarad they erroneously written pF picofarad but this is not picofarad and the rest of the components you can see these these are the frequency components here is 100 microfarad and uh, this one is the resistor and here are two resistors and they have given the formula for this voltage setup you can see voltage out 1.25 multiplied by R1 plus R2 divided by R2 and in terms of voltage. This is what is the formula to set up the voltages and this is R1, R2 and uh, of course the R2 in division also. So the same way these two resistors are setting up the voltage. These are actually in the 
whatsoever this feedback loop you can see for this particular uh, operational amplifier and uh, here is a circuit this is the oscillator the oscillator is run by these two components uh, what is the way it works is you know this is not simp a simple series regulator before in older days what I'm going to show you one example this was the regulator this is somewhat uh, 78 uh, 7805 7805 these were the very very much common regulators series regulators they were used one was the input ground and then output uh, whatsoever we were applying input somewhere from uh, 12 to 15 volt and it was giving constant 5 volt uh, this was what was the way it was working but the problem was this this was this is having you, you can see the tab which was tightened on the heat sinks heat sink and if you were about to draw uh, maximum current from this regulator we were have to mm, put this on uh, regulator and the heat sink because this was producing a lot lot of heat it was wasting energy so this is something uh, not uh, preferred design instead these new design you can see this these are inverters actually they are nice enough they are uh, whatsoever this uh, known as uh, uh, switching regulators switching regulators are good enough they are uh, very very much effective and efficient and uh, was uh, power saver also so by the, for this purpose these are used very commonly nowadays but problem is they are going defective as in our case it went defective but we can repair it so the way is actually here it is producing some sort of square wheel on this particular uh, coil so this square wheel this power energy is dumped on this capacitor which is of course the output capacitor and this energy is proportional to the regulated power which we are setting up through these two resistors so this one in our case it should be 5 volt uh, constant and uh, these this frequency and uh, whatsoever this uh, duty cycle for this pulse will be changed and it, it will produce a constant 5 volt on this particular capacitor this was a little bit uh, explanation I did for this circuit now I'm going to show you how uh, this is working and uh, what's the fault in this particular switch so here is you can see this is the output capacitor which we were talking about c2 uh, somewhere it will be written they read, wrote it uh, c is 42 yeah because this is not the particular circuit for this one instead this is a data sheet actually so the c42 this is the output capacitor we are going to check it we are going to measure voltage over here using our multimeter it should be 5 volt if it is not 5 volt then of course our fault we just found so here is my multimeter i'm just setting on voltage i'll show you the display also for the meter it's a little bit difficult to show both things all together i'm trying to do so here as you can see while i'm going to check on uh, this capacitor just look at the meter display it is showing something 1.79 or 1.8 volt on this capacitor so this is something very very much low voltage so the circuit is not operating properly circuit is behaving as it should not be the reason is the voltage is low enough for this controller so while well, we will provide complete 5 volt it will do properly and I'm going to show you on the oscilloscope the same thing uh, here on this coil I'm going to show you the pulses which I just discussed for the education purpose only here I'm going to connect my oscilloscope probe on this coil you can see this is the coil actually the L1 which we were going to discuss about that this is producing power or dumping power on this capacitor so here on the one leg I'm going to connect and the other probe of course is grounded on the oscilloscope screen you can see these are the pulses and uh, I'm going to show you the settings also we are connected to channel 2 of course DC and here is a 2 volt our voltage setting is and frequency is somewhere on the 1 microsecond frequency is not much concerned here but voltage is so what we are going to see is from 0 line to 4 uh, 6 and somewhere 7 7 volt amplitude pulses are dumping on on this output capacitor so this should be charged up to some extent this should be charged up to 5 volt and should give a constant 5 volt this was what was the 
just have to be explanation I was giving to you for the understanding. So now we are coming to trouble and uh, repair this thing. You can see here this thing, this capacitor, just top of this capacitor you can see this is bulged. Here you can see this is bulged. Here this capacitor is also a little bit bulged and here this capacitor is normal. And of course this capacitor is also normal. So this one is the important capacitor. This is also this is actually on the power supply. If it is it will go bad, it will load the power supply. But it is not the case here. So this one, this capacitor is important here. We are going to remove this capacitor, replace it with another one. So we are looking for another capacitor, a replacement capacitor. Here in this PC power supply, I locate one capacitor which is a bit bigger than the existing one but uh, it is okay in the capacity it will do so we will replace with this one using my heat gun I'm going to heat up uh, this capacitor actually this is a little bit over killing you can say what I'm doing with a heat, uh, heated air I'm going to remove these uh, normal components so you can say that this is what I'm doing a little bit over killing because uh, regular soldering iron can be used but I'm not going to use a regular instead of that I'm using hot air so hot air can do also and is doing well as compared to soldering iron So this capacitor I just removed from using the hot air. Here is what is our replacement capacitor bus but as you can see this is very very much tall. If we will fix it we will not be able to put on covers. So what we are going to do is we are going to make it axial something like this. I will put these wires to the terminals and then we will show you how to fix it. We will put it axially actually. So by soldering iron I am going to solder these two wires to the legs of the capacitor to make it axial. So by this way I just soldered them and now is the time uh, to fix these two wires uh, on the PCB somewhere like this. So the capacitor will come like this. It will stay on the controller and uh, something in air like this and it will do the purpose. So here looking at the polarity I am going to solder uh, this capacitor on the board so I'm going to heat it up. I can use this, the hot air also of course, but at the moment I'm going to use soldering iron. So I will a little bit thin it so that it will ease my job. And of course I will do it by this way then I will fix the capacitor in some orientation. A little bit solder so that the soldering will be easy enough then. So by this way I just solder it. Now you can see soldered and both sides actually they are soldered and good enough now we will switch on the unit and we'll see the result so as you can see the abnormal behavior is not there they are working properly there is no light blinking nothing only one light is there which is the power indication of course and of course I have to show you the voltage on the capacitor after repair. There should be 5 volt.
they are actually 1.7 the meter is telling 1.7 volt but the circuit is working as you can see there is no more blinking so what it means is there should be 1.7 volt working on this but as this capacitor was bad so it was not behaving properly that's why we were getting an er erroneous indication so they are not 5 volt actually what the data sheet was telling as you can see here as it is telling 5 volt but it is not because this diagram is not for this particular unit instead they were only uh, data sheets which I just uh, printed so again we are going to look at the behavior as we I am going to power it up so the all LEDs have been come once and then went off and then one only power LED is uh, there this is showing power and the rest of the LEDs are not there so the, by this way I just repaired this switch and uh, restored it to life and I will reuse it of course I will not throw it away thank you for watching keep on watching uh, share and subscribe like also if you are liking